Join me today as we work on this fun painting called Moonshine, inspired by a song called Family Business from Ashley Wineland. Hi, welcome to another episode of The Rock and Roll Painter. Today we have something new and fun we're going to do. Today The Rock and Roll Painter is going country. So first, let me change my hat. Got to get on my Rock and Roll Painter country style hat. Okay, the reason we're going country. Today's painting is going to be based on a song by a, a talented young singer, songwriter, country musician, Ashley Wineland. Recently, I made a trip down to Nashville and got to see Ashley and her uh, drummer, Nick Sanderson. They were doing a little unplugged tour, got to see a couple shows, meet them and hang out with them. And one of their songs called Family Business about Ashley's colorful uh, and, and history in her family of making moonshine. So that's, that's what inspired this painting called Moonshine. The song is called Family Business and we have special permission to play that song at the end of the show. So that'll be a real treat. So I hope I said everything I wanted to say, but let's get started with this painting. Uh, what I have here is a 16 by 20 canvas. I just have some black. Well, the first thing I did, as you notice, I already got the shape of an old moonshine jug. These old moonshine jugs made out of stoneware, they're just, they, they, you know, they were the true symbol, the old mountain man drinking moonshine with the three X's on there. And we'll explain all that in a little bit. Um, like I said, it's just some black acrylic just to make this a still life kind of feel. This is just dark and shadowy back here. And I got a little bit of gray here just to give the illusion of a little bit of a tabletop. So let's see what we can do to get to make a, a painting. And we're going to have some of the elements, some of the ingredients that are go, went into making moonshine that are all part of the song that we're going to have down here to uh, fill this up. So let's see what we can do to get this going. So first, let's paint this old stoneware jug. These old stoneware jugs are fascinating, the, the way color and light dance off of them. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's take a little bit of a sienna, some umber, some black. And we're going to have some light over here. So let's just start making this side a little dark. These old jugs, they were dark on the top. They were a lighter color at the bottom. I never understood. I don't know why that was, but that's just the way they were. These things are collector's items now. People have them on shelves, and you know they have a little value to them. Let's get the top of that, top of that jug colored in. Once again, just some dark colors, some sienna, some brown, some umber, some black. Just to get a nice dark value here. This old uh, handle here, we'll make sure we include that. Like I say, Ashley's song is about the adventures of her family over six generations. They were moonshiners, and our whole country has a colorful history of moonshining. You know, moonshine helped pay for the Revolutionary War, you know, all the way up through... Uh, Prohibition, you know, moonshine just has a colorful, colorful history. Even NASCAR has its beginnings with moonshiners trying to, trying to outrun the revenueers is what, where NASCAR got its start. So it's just a colorful part of American history. And like I say, Ashley's song, you're going to hear at the end, is just a nice, cool story of how her family had a little history in that. And it's a cool song. I hope you like it. So it inspired this painting. So we get some of these dark colors, kind of work them around. I want this painting to be nice and loose, painterly. You can see up here I still have all the brush strokes on this acrylic, and that'll help the light to dance across this. If that's just painted flat, the, the light is flat. And having all those brush strokes gives energy. It gives energy to the painting. It's amazing what that'll do. All right, let's wipe off some of that dark color. Let's go, let's go with some red. Let's have some red. Let's light that up. We're going to have a light source over here. Let's light that up. Let's say nice and painterly, nice and loose. Bring some of that red around. Nice and painted. I like I just like that word. I like that word, like the feel. Get that, get some color over here. You might even have a little bit of that red all on that little handle kind of dancing around there. 
nice and loose, nice and loose. The color really dances off these little pots. It's amazing how color and light just dance off of them. You'll see things reflect from across the room. Let's go some orange here. Really light this guy up. Go with some orange. Really light that up. And if it's going dark around the side there, you see it helps give shape to it. Helps give some shape. Let's give a little bit more orange. I kind of lost some of that orange with some of that brown. Give some metal orange. Nice and loose. Make some metal orange up here. Across that, uh, across the spout there. I guess we need a little more dark. I need to clean that up, make that look like the other side of the, the other side of the jug. There we go, it looks a little better than me. Now we just need a little bit of light on that. I need a little bit of light. So let's get some white. I don't want to overwork this, I just want to get some light. Get some light right through there. Maybe a little bit of light up on that rim. Maybe see a little bit of light on that handle. But nice and painterly, nice and painterly kind of look. Kind of lose that out a little bit. Okay, that's the top. That's the top part. Well, we might have a little bit, now to think about it, we might have a little bit of reflective light. So with some, with some um, cerulean blue, kind of a turquoise kind of color, you might have a little bit of reflective light over here. And that blue really is a con uh, complementary color with that orange. So that really make it, really make it sparkle. That's that light bouncing off and dancing off the other side. All right, let me keep my hands clean. Let me keep my hands clean. Let's clean this brush up a little bit. Let's paint the bottom of this. So this could be a lighter value. We still have a light over here. Let's go with some uh, some yellow ochre, some white. Get some more of that white down here. Get some of that white. Some yellow ochre, some white. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of orange, yellow ochre, and white. Get some more of that white. Some more of the yellow ochre. Once again, we're going to have our light source up in here. Going to have our light. So we want a little lighter value in this part. A little bit of lighter value, but work some of that color around nice and loose. Get some all the way down here. I want a little bit darker, so we'll get a little bit more, a bit more of the sienna here, or the uh, ochre. Get some of that darker value all the way around to that side. Once again, we're still keeping, keeping things loose, keeping things loose. But we do want a clean edge over here, but keep things loose. Nice and painterly. Let's say I first became aware of Ashley through a mutual friend we have, Miss Kiki Plesha. She would post things about Ashley's progress, uh, learning the music business and making videos. So it was a pleasure for me to go down to Nashville and meet her and Nick, hang out, listen to her music. It was a good time. It was a good time. And up here, you just want a nice soft transition between that dark and the bottom. Let's get a little bit more light there in the middle. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of light. A little bit lighter there in the middle. A little bit lighter, work its way around. So we have a round shape to that. Now on this side, let's take some of the yellow ochre. Let's add a little bit of a little bit of cerulean blue to that. A little bit of cerulean blue, darken that up. Maybe just a touch of black. Some of that same color, but we want it darker over here. Yes, that's a little darker. I'm not sure I like the color. Let's get a little more blue in it. But with oil painting, you just change as you go. Just get get what you like and keep going. Work some of that color around. You want a nice round shape to this. We're going to have some stuff down the front here, so if I miss my line a little bit, no worry. No worries. So get that transition between those two colors, the top and the bottom. I'm going to keep that, keep that light to there. I don't want to lose that light. Now all the way over here, be even a little darker yet. This is the, out of the light in the shadow, so it's almost going to be a, almost a disappearing edge over here. But with that darker value around here, hopefully it gives some shape to this old jug. So you can find these old jugs at flea markets, yard sales, and they're really collectible now. They probably have a lot more value, even though they carried a lot of different liquids in there. It wasn't just moonshine, but like I say, the old the image of the Americana, the old mountain man carrying his moonshine jug, that's how I think most people, that's how I see it. Let's get a little darker down here. This, this corner back here would almost be a vanishing edge. Almost a vanishing edge. Get a little darker yet. Get a little darker. There we go, a little darker. Nice and loose, nice and loose. Get a little darker over here to give a little shape to that. I see I want to Use my finger just to soften that edge. Transition between the top and the bottom gives a nice soft edge. 
Okay, we need to brighten that thing up in the middle. Let's get another brush here. Get some more of our white, some more yellow, Maybe some yellow, some white. Let's brighten it up where that, where that light's gonna be. I'm gonna keep some continuity. If that light's shining right here, we want some light down there. Nice and loose, nice and loose. And say my favorite word today is painterly, painterly. Nice and painterly. Okay, now we really wanna pop that and get some light. So just some straight white. Get some straight white. Get some light to that. Get some light hitting that. Make some more of that light. Get some more of that white. Make that light pop. Really bring that, bring that shine out there. Yeah, I really like the way that looks. Maybe get just a little bit of the cerulean blue. Maybe have a little bit of reflective light on that side of the jug. A little bit of reflective light. There, like I say, I can't stress enough, I like the painterly, painterly look. Let me get my hands clean. Got to keep things clean as we go. Now, some of the elements, some of the ingredients in Moonshine. That part of the song, she said they turn, a, turn that corn into liquid gold. That's part of the song. Like I say, you're going to hear that at the end of the show. It's a real treat that we've got permission to do that. Let's clean that edge up a little bit. Soften that edge a little bit. Let's make some corn over here. Let's say we got some green. Maybe some green, maybe some of that green. Maybe a little bit of sienna umber. We want a darker value. Say we got a big old ear of corn sitting down here in front of that jug. Picked up some of that light. We need to keep it a little darker. A little dark, a little brown, a little green. Gonna have an ear of corn laying right in front of that, that old moonshine jug. Or that old, oh, guess what I forgot to put in there already. Let's go back while I'm thinking of it, while I'm thinking of it. Let's, let's get some black here. Let's say we got an X right there. What the X is on a moonshine jug. I'm reading about it. I mean, how many times it was distilled. So when it had been distilled three times, that was the best stuff. Kind of keeps that curve going around there. There, I want to make sure we did not forget that. That really is what makes it read moonshine. All right, let's go back, get some green. Get some green, get some of the sienna, get some of these darker colors. I got a little brown, let's get some, what green? Want some green in there. This, see what will bring us down, some of that corn, it's still in the husk here. Some of that color coming out. Need that greener, need it greener. Those, one always has a green there. That's the green we're looking for. But I like the different values, the green and the sand in there. But let's get some yellow. And there's some light coming down there. You need some light. So you can see some lighter values on the top. Some lighter values. Really see that. Hopefully that's reading the ear of corn. Like I say, some of the, some of the ingredients in moonshine is all we're trying to capture here. Get some light. Light coming around there. And maybe there's just a little bit of a little bit of shadow, some of the light coming and dancing up here, so we have a little bit of shadow. We'll just set that guy down. A little blue in the light, let's get some black. Some blue and some black. Just kind of set, set that in the moon jug down, but give a little shadow, kind of sets it down on the table there. But like I say, the light's over here, maybe it's bouncing off the back. Man, I'm making a mess today. Let's keep this clean. Let's keep this clean. Okay, along with, along with corn, I think they had Corn, sugar, and water, from the way I read. I'm not a moonshiner, so I don't want to miss any ingredients. But corn, sugar, and water. So, when I started painting landscapes and seascapes and florals, I never saw myself painting a, a little pile of sugar, but we're gonna to try to do that with some black and some white. Get a grayish kind of color, maybe a touch of blue. Get a grayish kind of color. Let's see if we can create little pile of sugar here. Somebody just dropped in, spilled a little pile. Hopefully I'll get to feel some granulation there by touching in like this brush. We'll come back with a little bit of highlight, but we just want to create a little bit of pile, a little bit of pile of sugar. And when they poured it on the table here, every grain like that has a uh, angle of repose, is what angle it stops at when it comes to rest. So hopefully I captured the right angle of repose for sugar. Get some of this loose out here. Hopefully, we capture some granulation. Now we need some highlight. Need some highlight on that pile of sugar. So that same brush, I just come in a straight white. Just really tap, tap. Try to open that brush up. Try to open that brush up. 
Let's see if we get some highlight. There's a little bit of a little bit of reflective light around there. A little bit of highlight on that sugar. A little bit of highlight. Still have some shadow, but I still want to make sure I capture the feel of some granulation, some grains of sugar there. The angle of repose brings that all the way over right in front of that corn. Just one more little pop of white. One more little pop of just some fresh white to really get some light on this side, since that's where our light source is. And hopefully that reads a pile of sugar. So in the moonshine we have corn, we have sugar, and I have a little bottle, maybe a little uh, mason jar, which, which always symbolizes the moonshine. See if we can create a little mason jar, a little mason jar of some water, some liquid, some clear liquid. So with a little bit of, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a phthalo green, maybe a touch of black, maybe a touch of this grayish color, just so it shows up. Let's see if we can create a mason jar over here. All right, let's see, we got the top of that mason jar. I know it's not going to show you yet, we're going to do some highlight here. Kind of the uh, neck of that with some grooves. Let's get a little bit more of that cut, a little bit lighter so it shows up. All right, like I said, we got the, the mouth out. That might be too light. The mouth, yeah, that's too light. Got to find that happy medium somewhere. There, okay. There's the top of that bottle, top of that mason jar, the neck coming around. The edge of that jar coming down. Picked up some of that white from my sugar. Don't want that white there yet. This side coming down. And you might even see, if it's clear, you see the bottom of that bottle. See the bottom of that mason jar through, through the side. Okay, now we just need to light that up a little bit. Let's get a little brush here. A little bit of a dirty white, some gray, some dirty white. Don't need a lot of color. Let's first give a little bit of little bit of light on this side. And typically that's all you see in a, uh, in a clear jar is just some of the highlight showing through. So we got some highlight all the way down that side. All the way down that side. You see the back of that mason jar. And with almost a little bit of dry brush, just get a little bit of form on that side. A little bit of form on that side. And I always like to take my finger and kind of work it out, kind of sets it down. Kind of get a little bit of a feel of a shoulder to that bottle. And of course you'd have a little bit, we missed a clear liquid there. Let's go back to our darker color that we had. You might have a little bit of a water line, some clear liquid. And with that same light color here, we'll establish a little bit of the reflection on the top of that that clear liquid is. There we go. Now we just need, see if I get a clean liner brush, now we just need some some of the highlight to pop, just to make that pop. So with some straight white, I'll come across the top of that mason jar, come along the shoulder, you might see some of the grooves where that lid screws on, and you'll have some highlight on that edge. I like to smooth that out to give that little bit of highlight. Get some more of that white. Might have some of that highlight coming all the way down. There's the bottom of that bottle across that side. And you might see a little bit of light just popping through over there. And finally, the last thing I see on that is a little bit of, little bit of light popping right there. A little bit of light. Yeah, I think it gives me a believable little mason jar. So we got our moonshine jug. We got the corn, we got sugar, we got the clear liquid, liquid which could be water, it could be a finished product of moonshine there. I think that's all the elements, all the elements I see in moonshine. So with a lighter value here, some blue, some white. Let's see if we can sign our name here. Call this, call this done. I think we have everything we want. Let's put a little bit of JDW over here. Let's say look back and it's just a still life, something completely different from what we normally do with still life, just to capture, capture the ingredients to go in the moonshine that was inspired by the song Family Business by Ashley Winley. Like I say, stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna have a treat and be able to hear the song that inspired us. Let's take this off, go put it in a frame. Take this off here, let that fall down. Let's take her off and put her in a frame. Okay, here we go. Let's see this in a frame. Let's see this in a frame. 
Let that drop in there. There we go. That's my painting called Moonshine. Like I say this is based or inspired by a song called Family Business from Ashley Wineland. But if you'd like to know more about the, this style of painting, feel free to contact me at therockandrollpainter.com. If you'd like to know more about Ashley Wineland, feel free to look her up at ashleywineland.com. And for now, we're going to hear the song that inspired us. Take it away, Ashley. <laughs> 